So what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Unconventional Side Hustles. Today we are filming here at Geodomes of South Texas. Link down in the description. This is one of my Airbnbs. I thought I'd take this opportunity to kind of film in a nice, you know, background, nice scenery. In today's video, we're going to talk about selling firewood as a side hustle. You can make a lot of money from this, guys. We're going to talk about how much you can expect to make, how you're going to get this done, how are you going to source the firewood, who your clients are going to be, so stay tuned. So it's a beautiful 35 degrees this morning. Um, we just had guests check out yesterday. All the cleaning ladies will be coming by today to, uh, to take care of everything. Um, but yeah, it's hot tub season. We got the hot tubs ready and yeah, I thought I'd go ahead and shoot the video here. So to talk about the side hustle, selling firewood, what are you going to do? What do you need? Um, again, they're unconventional side hustles for a reason. They're for people who don't have access to a lot of the city amenities that, that a lot of city folks have. Um, again, if you watch any of my episodes, I, I talk about, you know, I grew up in the country in a small rural town. I, you know, I didn't grow up in a big metropolitan area, but I always had the hustle, I always had the drive, and I had to find other ways to make money. A lot of people that live in the city have other other resources available living in a, in a big metropolitan city. Big metropolitan city. But living out in a rural area, rural setting, you don't have that luxury. So you have to find other ways to make money. So one of the ways I would basically, you know, make this happen was I would source firewood. So there's different ways to do this. You don't have to live out in the country to make this happen. This is this can this side hustle can be for anyone who is willing to put in the time and the effort and to learn about the business. Again, I used to do this when I was in high school and a little bit into college to help pay a little bit uh, of the tuition. College is expensive. I did have a full-time job at that time, but uh, you know, a little extra money doesn't doesn't hurt. So this was before I owned property. Um, before I owned property and I actually had a ranch to go and take mesquite wood, um, I would go and actually source firewood off the county roads. I would go down back roads and a lot of the counties would um, cut down trees that were overgrowing on fence lines. So when they overgrow on the fence lines, they cut them down and they leave them there usually for about a day or two, sometimes a week, just depending on how busy they are. And what they do is they, they leave it there, people go by and cut it and use it for firewood. But I knew that a lot of people don't have access to mesquite wood up north. So what I would do is I would go get a truckload, fill up the truck, full of mesquite wood. I'd go with my chainsaw, cut it up, load up the truck, and haul it off. And then what I would do is box it up, put it into a box. I would get flat rate boxes, which were free from the postal service, and ship them out on eBay, um, mainly eBay. I would do a couple through Facebook, like 99% of the, of the business came through eBay, actually. So I was making pretty good money. And again, people don't have access to that type of mesquite wood up north. So they're willing to pay a premium on top of the shipping cost. So I think at that time when I was shipping them, it cost me about $17, $17 some change, right under $18 to ship a box out there. Today, the prices are probably different. Um, it's been years since I've done this, but again, it helped a lot. And I would do it by the pound. So I would say 50 pounds, 40 pounds worth of mesquite wood for... I believe I was selling it for $40, $45 for basically a dollar a pound is basically how I was selling it. And typically with a flat rate box, I think it was a large box, I was able to fit in about, I would say nine to 12 logs, decent sized logs in a, uh, in a box. And people were really, really happy. I had a lot of reoccurring customers. And again, it's a very inexpensive, inexpensive way to get started because everything is profit with the exception of buying a chainsaw if you don't already have one pretty much that's it and chainsaws don't burn a lot of gas so you don't need a whole lot of money to to get started unless you don't have a chainsaw then you're gonna it's gonna cost you, you know 200 bucks to get started but again it's a very simple easy side hustle that you can easily start that will start generating income again if you have an eBay account that's even better you already have a head start on it all right guys, so now we kind of briefly explained how I basically did the business when I was younger. Um, 
So how much can you actually expect to make from this? Like I said, back then, more than 10 years ago at this point, I was selling it for about $45, about a dollar a pound. Today, I don't know what the prices are, but I'm sure you could probably get at least $2 a pound. Um, if you are in an area where, for me, I was, I was selling mesquite wood. Mesquite wood is, is very abundant where I'm at. It's everywhere. So I can't really charge a dollar a pound here. But what I can do is I can charge a dollar a pound for somewhere that doesn't have access to mesquite wood. So again, use whatever you have near you and then target people who don't have access to that. It could be oak wood. It could be pecan wood. Those oak, pecan, and, and mesquite are some of the most, and apple, uh, apple flavored uh, trees and all that, apple flavored smoke, are probably the most common types of firewood people use to barbecue with. And I'm sure there's other trees out there that I've never even, you know, touched in my life. So again, use whatever you have access to in your area. And again, target people that don't have that in their general area and you can obviously get a little bit more money because it's not readily available for people in that area now again for mesquite wood i was selling it by the pound about a dollar a pound 40 to 45 dollars was the average purchase sometimes i would get i remember i got this one order it was a large box i don't know probably be about a four foot by three foot maybe four by four box he wanted full of mesquite wood it was a couple hundred dollars for that and i was like holy crap um again i'm a kid in high school um that was a lot of money for me so um you can make over a thousand dollars a month doing this i mean it it just depends on your hustle how often are you willing to run to the post office to drop this stuff off how much firewood can you actually cut down and list i kept pictures and i just used them for the same listing i didn't take pictures each time i just used one photo uh, the same photos over and over again and then that's how it listed and then I made multiple listings um, based off of like you know small boxes little boxes and whatever like a say like a $40 listing for 40 pounds another listing for 80 pounds that's how I basically did it I made three different listings basically small medium large and uh, yeah that was pretty much it just use the same photos went out cut all the firewood and again I used mesquite wood you can use whatever firewood you have available make sure it's wood that people can actually use in their homes either for where their fireplaces for barbecuing fire pits etc um who your client's going to be again it depends who you're targeting if you're targeting um people up north where it gets a little colder maybe they need more firewood for their chimneys or for their um barbecue pits whatever it is your clients are going to be different. Again, for me, I didn't target people that were local because I was had my mesquite wood. Nobody locally is going to pay me what I was asking because they can just go down the street and get it themselves for free. So, again, knowing who who you're going to uh, uh, sell this to is important, and knowing your general area, knowing what is available in your area as well. Now, I'll quickly talk about how much time this actually took. Again, I was a full-time student. Um, I did this a little bit into college as well, had a full-time job, and was a full-time student, and doing this side hustle. It, it didn't take as much time as you may think. The hardest point, the hardest part, the longest part, was just going out, driving down the, the county roads, the dirt roads, and getting the mesquite wood that, that was cut. That would take me like two hours, maybe three hours, depending on how much firewood I was going to pick up. And then I would already have it cut i would cut it there on the side of the roads and just cut it up into logs that fit into those boxes i already had the measurements in my head i already knew what they what fit inside each box so i would just do it there be done with it typically two to three hours there next i would just sit and wait on ebay for um for orders to come through and then i would usually go to the post office once i had maybe three orders four orders i would you know take them to the post office and uh, either go to school or go to work or depending on what day it was um that's pretty much how it happened and on a week you know sometimes two three times to the post office or so just depends um and again it wasn't that much time honestly it was less than 10 hours a week is what i was spending on this side hustle so it's not a whole lot of time 10 hours a week for at least a thousand dollars a month is not a bad deal at all during the winter time 
I saw my sales would go up. I would I would be shipping out a lot more starting October, November, December, even into January and February up into the northern states. Um, I was getting a lot more orders. So uh, just something to keep in mind. It is winter right now when I am making it here in South Texas. Uh, we're about to be in winter, I guess. So, you know, you are going to be making more money come the winter time. In the summertime, you're going to be getting a lot more smaller requests for barbecue um, wood, basically smaller logs so they can throw it into their barbecue pits. That's one thing I noticed. Um, there are some other branches that you can kind of veer off on. I used to get some requests for people who did a lot of woodworking and wanted some mesquite slabs and also just green mesquite wood so they could uh, work with it since they were woodworkers. So. There are other avenues and I can talk about that in another video if you are looking into uh, maybe doing a side hustle like this because again it's very profitable because it doesn't really cost you money. It's free if you go and pick it up on the side of the roads. Today I actually have land where I can go and get this wood from. Um, but for the most part, yeah guys that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Um, I hope it was informational and you got some value from this. Definitely like, share and subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.